Okay, in this video we're going to discuss the different kinds of screws and nuts that you might see in VEX. Just so you know, this is an example of a nut, and over here on the left is an example of a screw. Um, this is just a standard nut. It's plain. Another kind of nut you might see in VEX is called a Keps nut. Some kids call these star nuts. Uh, instead of, unlike the plain ones, they have little, um, almost like teeth on the edges here. And it acts a little bit like a spring washer. So when you tighten it down, that little uh, set of teeth will, um, will bend down a little bit, compress a little bit, and the teeth help it sort of dig into the metal. So um, that's a Keps nut. And then another common one you will see is uh, called a nylock. And what makes it different is that it has a little bit of plastic um, inside here that's a little bit smaller than the screw it's going to go on. And that helps it um, sort of hang on to the screw. So why would you use the different ones? Well, the Keps nut and the standard nut, um, they're a lot easier to get on and off a screw. Um, you probably could uh, only want to use the standard if you ever if you ever see these for building like a, a prototype or just experimenting with something. Um, that's because they're very susceptible to vibration. Um, these robots get beat up a lot on the playing field in that, so you probably wouldn't want to use a standard nut for your final design. A Keps nut is a little bit more secure than a standard nut because of the the teeth. Um, I've seen some world-class teams use nothing but these, and they work pretty well. But in my opinion, they're also still uh, a little bit too susceptible to um, vibration for a final design. So if, in your final design, I would use the nylock. The problem is these are harder to get on and, and to get off. Um, they're great for your final design because they, uh, they won't just rattle off. But if you're doing prototyping that, I'm not sure this would be my first choice. I would probably try the Keps nuts. In VEX, you'll probably see two major types of screws. You'll hear people talk about an 832 screw or a 632 screw. Now, what do these numbers mean? The first number, 8, actually has to do with the diameter, how, how wide the screw is. Um, and the, the second number, in this case a 32, is how many threads per inch. So if you were to measure this, you would see that this has 32 threads per inch. And the 632 screw also has uh, 32 threads per inch. What's different is the diameter. And where the numbers come from, for the 832, uh, the 8 is actually the wire size that these are made out of. It's just an industry standard. Um, size 8 is... they. Uh, is the size of the wire that the machines um, use to cut these uh, type of screws. The uh, 832 is a little bit bigger than the 632. For most of your assembly you'll be using the 832 along with the 832 nut. The 632 screws, um, most of the time what you're going to see those when um, you're putting your motors on. They, these 632 screws are often kind of a brass color Oops, out of focus there. Um, they're sort of a brassy color. They sometimes have a little um, bit of epoxy stuff here that helps hold them in place. And those get screwed into the, uh, the screw mounts of the motors. But we'll talk about the motors later. Um, your, your standard VEX screws come in a wide variety of sizes. Legally, you're, up, you're allowed to use up to two inches long. You're legally allowed to use a number of different types of screws. Um, this is called a slotted head. Uh, there are other types that are um, a Phillips head. Um, most of what kids use uh, look like this. It's a hex head. Most of the time you'll be using screws that are about an inch. For assembly in that, you'll use screws that are about an inch or a quarter inch or something like that. Um, the only reason you might use 
a long screw is um, you know for special applications. As for getting a nut and a screw together, I've seen a lot of kids have trouble figuring out well, which way do I turn this thing? Like what's a way to what's a way to remember how to turn it? There's something called the right hand rule. It's pretty simple. The direction you want something to move in, you use, well, you start with your right hand. You point your thumb on your right hand in the direction you want the thing to move. So if you want the screw to move toward the nut, your thumb is pointing that way. Your fingers then point in the direction of rotation. So a lot of threads in this industry are right hand, right handed threads. So you want the screw to go into the nut, you're using the right hand rule to drive it in there. It works the same way with the going with the nut. You want the nut to go onto the screw, you turn it in the direction your fingers are pointing. So you're rotating it that way. This goes for uh, screwing in light bulbs and most other things. Um, there are some exceptions to this in industry, but a lot of threads are right hand rule. Uh, if you want an interesting little video to watch um, on the right hand rule, there's one called uh, Right Hand Rule How to Screw in a Light Bulb on YouTube, which is uh, pretty useful. Now, there is a problem you can sometimes encounter when trying to screw things together. It doesn't happen very often, but you can get something called cross threading. And that's where the nut doesn't quite get on to the screw quite right. But it's on there well enough and people will force it and force it and force it and you're essentially cutting new grooves into the inside of the nut. And that's called cross threading and sometimes you'll get like halfway down before it just totally jams and you can't get it on or off. To avoid cross threading, the best thing to do is put your nut on and then turn it the wrong way a little bit, just ever so slightly, like maybe a quarter of a turn or something. Turn it the wrong way and then turn it the proper way. And that prevents, that helps prevent cross-threading. Um, that's especially true, like if you're, you, you know, trying to put a screw into a motor. Um, some kids just like they stick it in there, and because these 632 motor screws have these um, have this epoxy on it, sometimes there's a little bit of resistance. You'll feel a little bit of resistance because that that's kind of like almost like a glue to help hold these things in there. You'll feel a little resistance, and so you think, well, that's normal, and they just keep on grinding and grinding and grinding until this thing is like jammed in there at a wrong angle. So even with this, before you start the uh, screwing the screw into the motor, you just want to back it off just a little bit. Sometimes you can almost feel the click of, um, of where, when the threads actually sort of fall into place. And then when you're, when you're confident with that, it should be fairly easy to get it started, and then you just continue on. But Cross-threading is something you don't want to do. And the standard type of tool that we use is called an Allen wrench or a hex wrench. Hex because it's got six sides on it. And that's what you see in the heads of these things. And that just fits in there. And that's what you use. And you also want to remember the right hand rule when you're turning these things. So you have these hex wrenches. Now sometimes, especially with the nylocks, uh, doing it by hand can get pretty tedious. So I recommend using some kind of ratchet system, or a little ratchet like this. It allows you to quickly, um, you can, you can, this part goes on the nut. Um, the other part you would hold with the, with the hex wrench or the Allen wrench. And so you, um, you can very quickly just sit there like that and ratchet that thing on there. And the way you reverse it, some of these, they're all kind of different, but this one, you just sort of turn it, and then it can ratchet the other way. Um, some of them, uh, like this one, you can take these little type of things off and switch them around. Um, like this one, it's got a different kind of mechanism here. You just turn that the other way, and then that that changes the direction that you're tightening or loosening it. I really recommend these for assembly. Uh, it makes things a lot faster. Um, it's a lot easier on your fingers, um, especially if you're using nylocks. Um, 
sometimes when you're using a, a long screw, you got to get a nut on a long screw, you can go to a longer barreled um, type of head for that. Uh, I think a lot of the, the nuts, um, like this one, is a 9mm. I don't know. It kind of depends a little bit on what kind of nut you buy because some people buy them from different suppliers than VEX. Um, but this, would, this sort of thing would allow you to get onto a really long screw if you had to do that. Well, this is a very handy thing to have. Um, for holding onto the nuts, you have wrenches. This is the standard wrench that kind of comes with a lot of VEX kits. So you'll see a lot of these. Um, you can also use ones that you get like from Home Depot or Walmart or whatever. Um, and there's some advantages to that. Um, some kids use like pliers. Sometimes you just can't get into the machine very well with any of those uh, wrenches or anything. And you can just sort of grip the nut with something like this. Um, be careful because a lot of the ones that are readily available, the cheap ones, they also have a wire cutter here. So I've seen kids like they're trying to grab their, their nut over here and they'll end up like, you know, cutting their finger off or whatever. Um, a lot of these come that way. I'm not sure why. It's kind of hard to find them without that. But they have a wire cutting feature and uh, it really kind of turns into a finger cutting feature. So one of the things you might want to do is get some, uh, get a filing, uh, get a file or get um, some sandpaper or something and just kind of dull that a little bit because you really, you know, you're, you really don't want to cut your finger off. Okay, there is a technique. Some people call it a jam nut. You can also do it with nylocks, but there's no reason to. And a jam nut is you basically get two nuts together like that, and you take a wrench and you just kind of rotate them in opposite directions, and they'll jam in, into place. That's a way to keep a standard nut or a loose Keps nut from from getting uh, loose uh, sometimes, you know, when you're desperate and you don't have a nylock or something. Um, I don't recommend doing this very much because it does put a little bit of stress on the threads. <clears throat> it can damage the threads and so um, it's not something you want to do very often, but uh, it is something you can do if you're desperate. One thing you want to be careful about when using your hex wrench, or your Allen wrench, um, make sure it's it's well seated inside the little hex-shaped notch there, or indentation. Um, if, you're, if you're not fully engaged in there and you're trying to wrench it really hard, you can strip that, or you can start to round that out. And it also can sort of round out the end of the tool, too. And so after a while, you can end up sort of stripping out that screw, um, and it makes it hard to get it out of your machine. And it also can damage the tool over time. For the hex wrenches, they come in two basic sizes. Uh, one of them is for the um, is a little bit bigger than the other. One of them is for the 832 screws. The other is for the 632 screws. They kind of look a lot alike. Um, one's just thinner, obviously. Um, um, I like to get these in, in sort of the long version. They seem to be a lot more useful to me uh, in the long version. You can get them in different lengths. You can get little short ones that you can get deep inside the machine or just medium-sized ones. Some kids put like a little piece of electrical tape on it. That makes it easier to find them when they get sort of knocked on the floor. Um, also, so you don't accidentally leave them in the machine. All right, so when you're, when you're tightening these things up and you get to the bottom and you're tightening up your components, don't over tighten it. Uh, there's no reason to try to like really, you know, put your, all your body weight into this thing. Just kind of get it so it's tight and then maybe try to turn it maybe another five degrees or something like that. I really don't recommend you use one of these, but if you get really good at building and you want something fast, help speed up your building, you can get something like this. And this one will drive a nut one way and then the other. Um, this one, I've taken a hex wrench and cut it off so it would fit inside here. And it basically can do the same thing, direction is reversible. Whatever you do, get one of these, if you get one of these, get one that's got a clutch. And you'll see these numbers on the side. You want to set that at a relatively low number. Um, if you have it set all the way at the high region or whatever, what'll happen is um, it'll just drive the screw in there and then it'll just tear the screw up when you get to the end. By setting the clutch low, what'll happen is the clutch itself will start to slip 
uh, when, when it starts to feel uh, too much resistance in the screw. So um, it's much better to just have the clutch slip than it is to have, and let's see if I can get this thing to slip for me. Well, it's going to rip my finger off first. So you'll hear it click like that. Um, that puts a gentle amount of torque on your screw or your nut, um, and that sort of guarantees that you won't tear it up. So again, if you're just beginning, I wouldn't get one of these. I would stick with the ratchets. You can do a lot with these. Sometimes these are just as fast as messing around with, a, with a, an electric screwdriver or one of those other tools I showed. Also, if you're using something like this, just make sure you're careful. You don't want to get your fingers stuck in there. You can, even though this isn't really sharp, you can drill a hole into your hand or into your friend's hand. Also, if you're using this to uh, put on a nylock onto a screw, don't go so fast, okay? There's no reason to go too fast because the friction with the nylock will create a lot of heat and that can melt the nylon. That sort of ruins it. It can also get so hot that it will burn your fingers. It's amazing. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for screws and nuts. Hopefully in the next video, I'll be able to show you how to use those to put things together. Thanks for watching and I hope that helps.